Hey there YouTube, Doc, Doc's Motorcycle Service. Rawr, 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 rawr. Welcome back to the garage. So in this sidebar video, we're gonna do another polishing video. If you didn't see the first polishing video, there'll be a little link right here popping up to it. What we decided to do in some of the downtime of working on the motorcycle was to get creative and go after some stuff that people don't normally do they don't normally think about doing so in that video we took the uh, intake manifold for hot donna and we polished it i'll see if i can put a little picture up right here of what it looked like <laughs> and it turned out pretty good turned out pretty good if you're following along in the series you know that in the previous video we did a inspection and rebuild of a harley davison single piston caliper which was the rear caliper on hot donna now i'm not going to go too far into that i'm just going to say click this little link up here and go take a look at it but if you did see it i made a comment toward the end of the video i said i have made the executive decision to go ahead and have this caliper chromed <sighs> well I got to looking into it and my chromer is about six weeks behind. I was like, you know, I really don't want to wait six weeks on this thing. Is there another option? So I started cleaning it up and I discovered that it was made out of aluminum. Aluminum. I said, you know what? Let's try and see if we can polish this thing. Started doing some research, calling some friends, and they suggested everything from brake fluid and soaking it overnight to brake cleaner to acetone to aircraft paint removal. Hmm. And that got me thinking, didn't we do something with some aircraft paint removal? And I went, yeah, we did. We cleaned the frame up on this bike in the very beginning before we had it powder coated with airplane paint remover so there's a little link going to pop up here to that video Ta -da! i got some of that left over you'll see some pictures here of it and i said you know what i'm gonna give this a try as you can see in these pictures we're set up here we got our uh, aircraft paint remover we've got a metal pan we've got uh, three different types of bristle brushes we've got a steel bristle brush copper bristle brush and we have a nylon bristle brush along with tooth uh, brush. Uh, real quick, want to talk about uh, some safety tips here. This airplane paint remover is not as potent as it used to be. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. Back in the day when you could buy this stuff, <laughs> you could pour it on the floor right here and it'd take the paint off of a car at the end of the driveway. That stuff was tough. Uh, I mean, you talk about a contact high, you'd get it. So, uh, safety tip, do this in a well-ventilated area. We got the garage door open, well-ventilated, okay? Need to do this in a well-ventilated area. Even though this stuff nowadays is toned down more than it used to be back in the day, yeah, I'm old enough to use that term, it's still flammable and it will still cause you some respiratory distress and what i mean by that is if you get enough of this stuff in your lungs it's going to damage your lungs so make sure you're in a well ventilated area another safety tip uh, make sure that you're using some type of protection on your hands some some gloves i've got a picture here of some latex gloves now i'm not going to practice what i preach i got 53 year old hands they're tough I'm not going to use these gloves, but you know, if you got tender hands, you might want to put some gloves on. If you got a cut on your hand, you might want to put some gloves on. Because if you get this stuff on your hands in a cut, it's, it, you're going to know it. It's going to smart you. S M R T. Mmm, smart. It's going to hurt. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this air, uh, airplane paint removal. Uh, remover and we are going to apply it with a brush. And here's a tech tip: whatever brush whatever nylon brush 
whatever toothbrush, whatever you use with this stuff, when you're done, it's done. It's a wrap. Can't use it for anything else. That's your investment in doing this. You're going to need this paintbrush, and you're going to paint this stuff on. You're going to need a timer, and you're going to need to set that timer at 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to do half of it, and then I'm going to do the other half. I'm going to hold the clean half while I work on this half, and then I'm going to hold this half while I work on that half. Real quick, check out the Facebook page. And that's all I got to say about that. So, let's get at it. All right, so we're going to get this stuff shook up. Here's your little tech tip. You're going to have to hold this thing while you do one area. So divide it in half. So I'm going to hold this area over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on all of this over to here and back to where I started at. Maybe start it like right here. Shake it out. Sometimes you have to squeeze the can. Get your little glob. Strip it off. Take your brush and just work it around. Work it into all the nooks and crannies on the half that you're working on. Remember, keep this stuff off your fingers. As it runs out, just get you a little bit more. Again, what you want to do is cover the entire area that you're working that half and once that you see can you see that the paint is already starting to come off this stuff like oh wow look at that ain't that something ha <laughs> ha that's why I love this stuff look at that Thirty seconds ago, that was paint that had been on this bike for God knows how many years. All right, so I'm going to give it one more once over. Lay it down. Put this right here. Grab my timer. Set it to 15 minutes. We'll be right back. There you go. All right. So, as we can see, it's coming off there. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that whole big glob that just came off right there. I'm telling you, man, you gotta love this aircraft paint removal. All right, so, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna record every time I do this. I'm gonna take our stuff, we're going to put it back on. We're just going to keep picking at it. Brushing at it. Scraping at it. And putting more on. And picking. And scraping. And brushing till I get this half done. And we'll be right back. That's three treatments of this aircraft cleaner. And then I hit it with brake cleaner just to, to knock the garbly gook off of it. There's a couple little spots, but that's, um, <laughs> that's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to get started on this other half. Coming along. Coming along pretty good. This crevice down in here in the bottom, right down in there, is giving me a little bit of a fit. Um, you can see a big old glob right there. I got to get off. The fins are fins are looking pretty good. I've got to get those sides, uh, the and these sides over here. But uh, <laughs> brother, we're coming along pretty good right here. Well, there she is. There's a couple little spots, but this is more of a discoloration than anything else. If I can get it to focus in there. And I'm telling you, man, little elbow grease. 
Make them look good. Make them look good. Um, I think she's good. I mean, I'm I'm calling that pretty good for uh what time is it? I've been working on this thing since about 2:30. So let's say um 6 7 maybe 8 applications of the airplane paint stripper. Um we went through one toothbrush which is done to another toothbrush uh, you saw how pretty the bronze bristle brush was when we got started we use that a lot and as you can see this stuff's going to come off in clumps you well you can see pieces of the toothbrush there YouTube there ain't a whole lot I can say about that I mean that girl cleaned up like a tramp now as i said before i'm not worried about this in here nobody's gonna see that uh the fins the insides down here the upsides up there they looking good i'm telling you man i am here to tell you i had no idea this would turn out looking like this does the way it looked in the beginning now um yeah i mean a couple hours of work boom there you go so what are we gonna do now well it's getting kind of late it's about that time it's about time to go get something to eat fat boy's got to eat so we're gonna let this thing dry overnight as i've said before uh, i cleaned it with brake cleaner and brake cleaner um uh, evaporates uh, i'm gonna wipe it down with a microfiber or a lint free rag and making sure that uh, there's no residue cloth or anything on here let it sit overnight and then we're going to come back at it and we're going to get started on it tomorrow afternoon now a couple of tech tips okay tech tip. tech tip i cleaned this up with brake cleaner because it's under pressure and it does a, a lot of good things you're not going to be able to see in here well maybe you can you can see my eye right there that's nice and clean took that brake cleaner put that little straw down in there and sprayed that out real good if you can see in here I'll, I'll take some pictures where your brake fluid or your brake line comes in and your bleeder valve comes in there's two little holes in here that line up with these holes took that straw and stuck it in from this way and blew it on both sides and then I stuck it down to those holes on the inside and blew it out the reverse side as you saw this stuff comes out like snot all right so we don't want that to, to dry in here or down in those holes in there and clog those holes up so that's your little tech tip when you're cleaning it you're not only cleaning the outside you're not only cleaning the surfaces you can see you can you're cleaning the the anatomy of it where the fluid flows in it we're going to break out the polish we're going to get started on this thing and uh we'll see how it turns out so stick around youtube well youtube welcome back i got a blister on my finger as the transition said it's been many days later we have been through some sandpaper we have been through some towels we've been through some microfiber cloths we have been through some water we've been through some dish detergent we have been having at it and I think the results uh, are going to be worth it. You know, I've said this before in a couple of videos. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Listen to me now. Small things. Little things matter. When you're doing something to your motorcycle, to your ride, to your sled, whatever you call it, because it's a term of endearment. And the reason that you gave it a term of endearment is because it's important to you. You like to take care of it. Raise your hand if you ever had a car and you named it, okay? Raise your hand if you ever had a pickup truck and you gave it a name. Hell, I'm 53 years old. Every vehicle in my driveway's got a name, okay? We care for them. They do something for us, we take care of them. It's a term of endearment, but it's the little things that matter. You roll up the bike night, you get out there and head over to the rally. You go to a bar, park your bike and get off of it. What do you do? Start looking at other bikes. Why are you looking at other bikes? You're trying to grasp ideas and suggestions of what people have done to their bike 
to any of your bike. Guess what? Somebody's going to walk by your bike and do the same thing. But if you've taken that extra moment, that little time to do something, something special, kind of like what we're doing right here in this video, the people who do these things are going to see your bike from a distance. They're going to ask it like a motorcycle. And they're going to walk on over there and they're going to go, damn! And that head's going to go down. And they're going to be like, what did this dude do? Where did he get this at? These are the kind of reactions that you want from people who see your bike. You can say you don't. Your story? Say what you want. I don't believe you. So, let's wrap this thing up. A couple things that I forgot to mention. In the, I showed you some pictures of the brushes and stuff like that. I forgot to mention the plastic putty knife. Now, it might not be a putty knife, okay, but, but this is it. Uh, this is, uh, I, I, I just looked in the drawer, they call it a knife set. It's called a plastic knife. Normally, you get them in three different sizes. This side, slightly larger and a little bit bigger like this one right here. And they do three different jobs. This is a metal one. Don't go gouging around on metal, soft metal, with one of these. This will take off hard, baked on junk, like paint on that caliper. You can see where I used it on the caliper to get some hard stuff off. I didn't cover it in the first part of the video, but I wanted to cover it here. Don't use this. This will, being harder, will scratch the metal, gouge the metal make you have to work longer and harder on something to fix it so stubborn areas get you a plastic knife that's what this is called i also didn't talk about the paintbrush the paintbrush as you saw in the video tech tip make it a nylon bristle brush do not use a paint sponge which is a small piece of sponge attached to a round popsicle looking stick handle this aircraft paint removal will just, I mean, if you want to buy a couple and put the remover on there for the entertainment factor, go ahead. They're only like 50 cent each, but you're not going to, you're, you're not going to get any use out of them. Need you a good bristle brush, a small one. This is like a, a two inch or an inch and a half. Remember what I said, I would work on one half at a time. Do that. Divide your project in half and then sort of get everything up to speed here then get the same thing up to speed over here and then come back and move this one up and then come back and move this one up and here's what i mean by that we used 200 grit 300 grit and 600 grit sandpaper on this project uh, we took a little bowl you saw our little bowl here we put some some dish detergent in it we put about a quarter inch of water in it and we cut the sandpaper into strips you'll you'll see all the little strips in the picture all these little folded over pieces uh, I cut it about an inch wide about two inches long folded it in half that way I got an inch by inch on both sides to work with and you'll go through these things <laughs> I'm gonna tell you man you're gonna go through them uh, but did the whole caliper in the 200 grit once I was satisfied that I'd gotten everything off that I was going to get off with 200 I moved it up to 300 once i'd gotten everything off i thought i was gonna i needed to get off with the 300 then i went to the 600 and the 600 the higher the number of the sandpaper the finer the grit therefore the smaller the scratches i don't know if you can hear this but this is 200 grit can you see the grit on that and how large it is here is 600 grit see how smaller the grit is the idea is you start off with you got this thing. The lower number sandpaper to really get off the large stuff. And then as you're starting to get large stuff taken off and you're starting to get pretty close to your surface, then you start bumping your numbers up to like 300. If this was like a bump on a level surface, I would probably use the 200 to start working on it. Once it got down to about right here, I'd probably use the 300 and then once it's right down to about right there I'm gonna come back with the 600 because what I don't want to do is mess up the surfaces on this side hey perfect example looking at this photograph you'll see these gouges you might say to yourself there's no way he's gonna get those out well here's that caliper now look at that ain't that something that's 200 300 600 and a lot of hours of doing this 
and sanding this way and sanding that way and getting down in here. So anyway, here's the final product. Shabam! Pretty good, don't it? <laughs> Turned out pretty good. Pretty good. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, <laughs> I mean, can you see the camera? I can. There's the video camera right there shining in this thing. There's the reflection of me. Uh, I mean, that's stupid. I mean, that that's stupid that this was on the... Uh, and so you can tell I'm not lying. There's the backside. See, I didn't have it chromed. Ha! <laughs> some old boy. Oh, I know that doc. He's a, he's a snaky rascal. He took that thing down there and had somebody chrome. Wrong. There's the backside. You can see how dull it still is. Turning it over. And bam. YouTube, I had no idea it would turn out like this. And you can see right here. You can see them gouges are gone. I know they were on one side of this. I think it was this side. Remember, I'm doing everything. Remember, I'm doing everything backwards here. But you can remember the pot and pitted little cover in here. I mean, no idea that it would turn out looking like that. As you see from the picture, this is what the workstation looked like. We got multiple pieces of sandpaper, multiple pieces of little paper, scissors to cut the sandpaper with, the pick, and multiple towels. You got to take this thing and sand it and then dry it and look at it. Sand it, dry it, and look at it. Sand it, dry it, and look at it to get it to where you want it to be like this. I'm telling you, not all y'all gonna do this, but I'm gonna tell you something. Roll up a hot donna at the rally, and somebody walks by and sees this, and they go, whoa, wait a minute. Because although it looks really good right here, and looks a lot like chrome, here's the chrome swing arm that we already had chromed. And it's gonna fit together like that. So now you can see just a little bit of difference in them. Not a, just a little bit. Somebody roll up and see this, and then they're going to see that, and they're going to go, well, man, that thing had a chrome job on that thing. didn't turn out too good. And then they're going to realize what they're looking at, and they're going to go, oh, snap. That's aluminum. That dude polished that. And them mad skills, they're going to start going up and go get you some mad respect from people. I'm just telling you. We'll get mad respect from people who know what they're doing. Last but not least, stuff right here. <laughs> Talked about it in the first video. Go in there, get your little finger dab, put it on here, rub it around one section at a time. And believe it or not, I'm still not done with this. I'm still going to play with it a little bit more. I have this uh, Brillo pad. It's yellow on one side, green on the other one. Stole it from Linda's sink. But what I would do, you see the corners here, I'd moisten it. After I put the polish on here, I'd lay it on here and just start working it around. Very lightly. Because remember, you're going from hard stuff to light. This is kind of uh, abrasive. And what I did notice toward the end was I still had some little bitty scratches in there. What I ended up doing was putting down the little, the little scrubber, getting some microfiber cloth, and then rubbing that in. And here's a tech tip. I always have one rag for wiping off and another rag for putting on. I mean, <laughs> we're done. It's a wrap. I may do a couple more things with this, but I'm not going to bore you with it. I've kicked around the idea of putting some red paint on the top of the fins. I've kicked around the idea of putting some red paint down inside the fins. Uh, I'm just going to have to look at that. And I'm investigating whether or not this needs to be sealed with some type of paint, some type of clear. So you'll see it again when we get to the rear end of the bike and start putting it together. Well, YouTube, there you go. I uh, hope this has encouraged you. I hope this has given you some motivation to try to do something on your bike that's a little different. Remember, the stuff is not going to be done overnight. I mean, you're going to have to you're going to, have to get blisters on your finger. You're going to have to go buy stuff. You're going to, have to sit in front of the TV 
uh, with this stuff sitting on your lap and sit there and rub it in. I mean, it takes time. If it, if it was easy, here's your, here's your tech tip. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It's not easy. It requires time. Check out the Facebook page. That's all I got to say about Lyra. Thanks for coming by the garage, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like the video at the end to get it up toward the top there. Please share it with anybody that you feel like could benefit by watching it. And as always, uh, ride safe, handle your business, and save some money. And 